Hey there, welcome to Umami Complex. Today we are doing something a little bit different. We are doing a tapioca pearl recipe, or if you're from the West Coast, boba. We're going to make boba milk tea, and we are also going to do a bingfen recipe uh, with some tapioca pearls. It's going to be really delicious and really fun, especially for those of you who really enjoy milk tea. So let's get started. To get started with your tapioca, what we're going to want to do is measure out 400 grams of tapioca flour, 270 grams of water, and about 100 grams of brown sugar. If the batch size here seems too large, you can always half the recipe, but I wouldn't go any lower. It just would not work all that well. Take your brown sugar and water and put all of that in a saucepan. We're gonna put that on the stove and get it to boil slightly. As soon as you start to see the first bubbles, put in your tapioca flour, mix it quickly until you see no more liquid, and then dump the entire mixture onto a mixing board table, whatever you're going to mix on. And we are going to mix the dough until it is thoroughly combined. It's really important that you knead the dough while it is still piping hot. It's going to burn your hands a little bit, but you just have to brave through it. As the dough is really hot and as it cools, it's cooking and setting, and it becomes impossible to mix beyond a certain point, um, so you want to move fast. We're going to mix the dough and then uh, take the ball of dough and let it rest for five minutes to cool down after uh, we see that it's thoroughly combined. The standard for when the dough is ready is that you'll notice the ball of dough will start to stick to itself more than everything else around it. So you should be able to take the ball of dough, put it on the table or put it on your hand and it's not going to stick. That's when you know you'll be ready and we can move on to the next step. You're going to take the ball of dough and roll it out so it is about the thickness of a typical tapioca ball and then we're going to cut uh, the flattened piece of dough into strips and then we're going to take each strip roll it so it's a round cylinder and we're going to cut it to the size and proportion of a tapioca ball and then we're going to take all of the individually cut pieces and roll them into small tapioca balls if you're clever and you've got a wok you can actually do this cool thing where you roll all of them together in a wok but we just watched some Korean dramas and rolled them individually. It's a fun afternoon activity. The individual balls that you roll don't have to be perfect because we are going to dust it in a layer of tapioca flour which will um, sort of coat the outside and give it a rounder shape. We're going to shake the excess off in a colander and we're good to go. You can freeze tapioca in the fridge like this and it will be good for a very long period of time. But meanwhile, we are going to boil that tapioca flour in some brown sugar water. How much brown sugar you put in it, how sweet you want it to be, just do it to taste. When your tapioca is fresh, you only need it to cook for about 10 minutes and then put a lid on the pot, take it off the boil, and let it sit around for another 10 minutes to soak in the sweet juices. And meanwhile, we can start making our tea. For the tea mixture, we are using a blend of Blink Tea's Cream of Earl Grey. Highly recommend the blend. I'm not sponsored, though. Uh, 10 grams of any generic Assam black tea and just the smallest pinch of green tea. But make sure you choose a green tea that doesn't have a pronounced... Uh, sort of grassy flavor. You don't want, you know, a grassy flavor in your milk tea. Now we've measured out the tea. We're going to crush the tea in a blender of some sort until that tea is about the size of uh, grains of kosher salt. We're going to use this in an AeroPress uh, to brew our tea. You don't actually need an AeroPress per se. You just need some way of filtering the tea. You can use a, a regular coffee filter, but it takes a long time uh, for that brewed tea to drain through if you can't press on it. And I'm super impatient, so an AeroPress helps me make tea super quickly. Very nice. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to put your tea in the AeroPress, and you're going to add about 40 to 50 milliliters of water into the AeroPress. And you're going to gently press out 
that water. Don't press to the bottom, just press a little bit until um, most of the water drips out. And you're going to repeat this twice. What you're doing here is you're washing that grassiness out of the tea and sort of getting it ready to, to extract the sweeter flavors that we really want. Um, after sort of washing it twice, you're going to just fill the AeroPress, put the plunger on top, and let the tea brew um, sort of in the liquid for about five, six minutes. And then you're going to press all the way to the bottom um, on the AeroPress to extract the tea. If you have really good tea and you didn't grind the tea too fine, sort of washing the tea twice will give you the optimal flavor. But if you find the tea is a little bit weak after brewing, you might consider washing the tea less or finding a better tea. Pressing the tea will take a little bit of effort. It takes about a minute to press all the way through. You want to aim for that because you don't want to press too hard. Otherwise, you might accidentally press tea through the filters, and you don't want that. Okay, now that you've pressed your tea, we're going to assemble the milk tea. Start with about 30 to 40 grams of sweet condensed milk, um, adjust it to your taste, and then just pour in all of the tea. Once you've poured in the tea, get a spoon, thoroughly combine the tea and the sweet condensed milk while the whole mixture is still nice and warm. This might take a little bit of effort, but be patient. And then you're going to want to scoop in uh, your tapioca. This is where you adjust the sweetness of the drink if the sweet condensed milk didn't do it for you. Add in tapioca and as much of the red sugar mixture as is required to make the tea nice and sweet. Now add your ice and your drink will be complete. I don't know about the tea because I don't know what kind of tea you prefer, but the tapioca will have a better texture than anything else you've had uh, from, from a local boba shop, unless they also make their tapioca fresh every day. And even frozen for about a month or two, the tapioca will retain its texture. Next, we are going to do a quick dessert. We're going to do a bowl of uh, bingfen. What we're going to do is we're going to add some clear bingfen, which I just made from a store-bought bingfen mix. If you can't find it, try Jello. It's honestly not that different. Um, then to that, what you're going to want to add is your tapioca and the sugars that the tapioca cooked in. That's going to be the base of our flavor. And to brighten that up a little bit, you can add crushed nuts, fresh fruits, dry fruits. Uh, I just had a random mixture from my house. And there you go. This pairs perfectly um, in the summertime with uh, sort of the spicy foods that I have on my channel. So make sure you check those out as well. And if you enjoy this recipe, um, Make sure you try it at home. Let me know how it goes. And if it goes well, hit the subscribe button and, and let your friends know that I exist. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I'll see you guys next time.